week's episode, we're going to be building a Pirates of the Caribbean inspired building. So this is really the second episode where I've dedicated to building structures for a pirate port. Uh, and of course, that's for the upcoming Raise the Black uh, Blood and Plunder game, the new expansion that Farlock Games is releasing, which should be out soon, next couple of months, I would think. Uh, and I really wanted to get uh, beef up my pirate terrain. So I got this idea of building a pirate port. Uh, in the previous episode, we built a kind of pier with a destroyed building. Uh, and I kind of mentioned in that episode that I wanted to do some buildings uh, from the Pirates of the Caribbean set. So I kind of looked at pictures of the movie set. Uh, and I came across this building that had these coffins out front of it. Now, if you watch old westerns, uh, usually uh, when the heroes come into town... Uh, there's always a, an element of danger because of the unknown town and they have these coffins uh, usually outside of some uh, carpenter's uh, building there where, you know, obviously people get killed and they they have their coffins made. Uh, so I think they kind of tried to do that element in Pirates of the Caribbean, but uh, a pirate version. Uh, so I wanted to add that. So, okay, some of this stuff might not be historically correct. Um but I definitely like that image or that feel uh, for my pirate port. So definitely uh, going forward, the projects that I'm going to be building are going to be along the lines and the theme of uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. Uh, and more of a, I, I would say, a <laughs> fantasy version of it. Uh, but nothing too crazy. Nothing that couldn't be uh, explained away as a historical building. So... Uh, Unfortunately, I didn't get it all done in one episode. I even started this in my free week. Remember, I've gone to three weeks and uh, uh, one week off, and I, I started halfway through that week, and I thought, oh, for sure, I'll get it all done in one episode. Uh, no. Because if you're building the interior and the exterior, and I I should have learned this lesson when I built the blacksmith's house, that it takes forever to do these things. Um, you got to let things dry and do other sections, and you really have to go in a certain order to get everything done. So I was able to get most of it done, uh, except for the roof. And there was a couple of accessories and some uh, a broken sign that I wanted to do and some other stuff for it uh, that I wasn't able to complete. So I'll do that in a separate episode, and then we'll complete this off. Uh, yeah, so it'll only take two, not not three like the blacksmith's house. It'll, uh, I'll get it all done in two. Um, and uh, that way I'll get this completed. And then we'll move on to uh, um, some other projects for the pirate port. All right, so let's take a look at it. This is what I've gotten done. You can see we got the coffins here. Uh, and we've got an old kind of Tudor style building. Uh, I think this wooden part in the in the images, they had lots of just cargo and stuff in front of it. But I'm thinking maybe uh, I can make it uh, some other kind of, uh, I don't know. I, I haven't decided really. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I'm definitely going to figure it out for before the next episode. So so just take a look at that. Now, this is kind of tricky because I want to make it all playable, right? So let's just take a look all the way around, see what it looks like. Uh, and uh, the top is removable. And uh, so let's just remove that. So we, you got the bottom half here. And uh, so this was a little tricky, getting all the pillars right and then... On here, I got to get the staircase right in here. Uh, so it was a little little tricky, and we're going to do that all in this episode. Uh, and then we have the top half. Now, really how I connect it is actually these three pieces. So this piece allows it to not wiggle this way, and these two pieces uh, stop it from wiggling up and down. Of course, if you tipped it upside down, it would fall off, but that's all fine. I'm not going to plan on doing that. Uh, and the roof... I think I'm going to make a solid piece that goes on there. I think that's the plan for it uh, to to build it. So that's pretty much it. Um, and uh, we'll get to that uh, rest of it in the second half. All right. If you guys like what we're doing here in the Punter Den, make sure you smash that like button and consider subscribing to the Punter Den and get first-hand information when we start these kind of projects. All right, everyone. Let's get down to the table. Let's start painting and let's start crafting. Okay, so let's look through some of the materials I used. Uh, we've got some square balsa wood. 
We have some matchsticks. Uh, these are uh, flat pieces of balsa wood, some popsicle sticks. Uh, the rope I wasn't sure if I was going to use, maybe perhaps for the roof in the second episode. We got some dollar store foam board, uh, my bag of bits, I call it. And uh, we got uh, some larger popsicle sticks, coffee stir sticks, uh, more balsa wood, uh, and then my base, which is a uh, dollar store foam board. Uh, and I uh, just got my miniature here uh, and kind of measuring out the way I want it to look. I knew that there was going to be stilts uh, kind of in the front holding the uh, upper level up. Uh, so I'm just kind of measuring it all out at this point uh, and making sure it all fits. Now, in the past, I wouldn't have drawn the lines right onto the base, but I think this is a lot easier uh, just to keep track of the thickness of the foam. Sometimes I forget to... Uh, add that into my measurements when I'm putting the whole thing together. So I, I like to uh, measure out the whole uh, base and all the pieces that I'm going to need to cut. So then I just measured them all out, cut all these foam board pieces out. Uh, and these are going to be all my walls of the uh, bottom floor. Now I, I kind of, I went with uh, a two and a half inch height this time. Uh, opposed to, uh, well, just a little under two and a half, actually. You can see on the ruler there. Opposed to the three I always do. I decided to make it a little tad smaller than I usually do my terrain. Uh, and I don't think it would make a noticeable uh, difference. And, and when I completed it, it didn't really. So then next step, I cut out uh, all my doorways and windows. Uh, and it's just, uh, sometimes you have to remember which side you want to keep the foam exposed on and which sides you want to keep the paper on. So the paper is really just for strength and durability. Uh, the foam part is uh, where you, you can texturize it, uh, especially for the inner walls, kind of has a, a stucco feel to it, right? With uh, that tinfoil ball there, uh, you can make a nice uh, stucco look. Uh, so it's really, it was tricky here where the uh, walls are half outside and half inside. I kind of had to use a straight edge uh, knife there and just just cut the paper and separate it um, so I could texturalize portion of it and the other port that was outside. Uh, I'm, I'm planning on covering with bricks and that's why I left the paper on there. Uh, paper for strengths and also that I'm just going to glue bricks on it anyways. So then once I got all those cut out, uh, I framed everything with balsa wood. Uh, I like to use balsa wood. It's easier to cut. Uh, I did use some coffee stir sticks on here, uh, and then I've made some uh, shutters. I, I, later in the uh, episode here, I'm going to cover more of how I construct the uh, shutters here. Uh, but I'm just showing you that I, I did one on this bottom level. Uh, and I kind of actually regretted putting this on first. Uh, I would have put it on afterwards like I did with the rest of them, um, mainly because you want to paint it first and then add it on afterwards. It was a lot easier to do it that way than the way I did it originally. <laughs> So it made it a little trickier. All right, so I got everything cut out. I got all the windows framed out. Got the doors framed out. Uh, I have I decided to have that half open that window with the shutters on it, uh, and it's just kind of a stylistic choice. Uh, and then I don't want to use white glue. Normally I would for this, but uh, I think I'm going to go with hot glue. It's much faster. Uh, if you're just careful and you don't glob too much on there, you can pretty well not make a mess, let's just say, uh, and then rapidly uh, put this together, uh, and it's a little easier to, to work with uh, once you've uh, hot glued it all together. So I'm just checking everything out, uh, and now I'm going to move to uh, what I like to use for extra support. I like to put beams in the corners of everything. Uh, this also will help uh, support the second level. So I like to put uh, beams on everything in here. And, uh, and I just use some white tacky glue to put this in. So I don't use hot glue for this portion. So this is after I've gotten all those in. And I've completed that. And now I'm going to move to uh, coffee stir sticks that I like to do like a trim or a, around the base of the floors. It makes it a little easier to put the co the uh, sorry the popsicle sticks in afterwards uh, if that's the borders in there. It's just easier to put them in afterwards. So this is after I've completed all that. I've put all the uh, coffee stir sticks in there. And now I'm going to address the bricks on the outside of the walls. So this is just uh, insulation foam. And I'm just going to put it in the coffee tin 
with some rocks there. And I did it for about four minutes. And I shook them up. Um, these are some of the ones I had left over from other projects. I'm going to use those up first before I use the new ones. Um, but really, I'm just going to cover the entire base uh, in bricks. I decided to... Uh, uh, but that's the best way to go. Now, I did put a, a frame above the doors. I didn't mention that. Uh, just You can see there just above the uh, doorway. Just uh, adds to the doorway. Here, I'm just I'm pointing to it right now. It's just balsa wood that I cut up and put above the, the doorways and some of the windows. Uh, and then, of course, I had finished all gluing all the bricks on. So then I'm going to move to the popsicle sticks that I'm going to use for my flooring. Uh, and I just use my uh, X-Acto blade here, carve in uh, some texture, uh, and then I'm going to use white tacky glue to glue this in. Uh, you could use hot glue as well. Sometimes I have if my popsicle sticks are too warped. Uh, they're hard to glue down with so white glue, so I move to hot glue. So then I move to uh, eggshell carton rocks. So this is just egg cartons, and I cut them out, uh, and I just glue that in with uh, white glue. Uh, that's what those stones are. Um, and I've done that in uh, previous episodes. Uh, and then I'm going to cover everything with black paint. So you can see that little piece of balsa wood I put on the top there. I realized that my front was actually a little bit lower than my back. I guess I mismeasured something. So I added that little piece of skinny balsa wood there. Uh, and then it actually makes it a nice level uh, floor for my for my second level. So now I'm going to move to uh, putting the base colors down. So we got some real brown, we got uh, bark brown, and we got uh, pablo. So these are the colors I always use for my base color. Uh, and uh, you're not going to spend too much time on that. Just wanted to show you that's what I did. Uh, I'll take a look uh, at the entire uh, building after I've added all those colors. Uh, just can do you can uh, see uh, what it looks like now, I definitely wanted to paint this before I went on to the second level or added any pillars or the coffins I plan on putting on the front uh, I figured I would just paint this all separate so kind of had to do uh, two painting steps in this whole project uh, now I'm moving to the stones so I got my camel that I use for most of the stone work on here uh, and those eggshell ones that I put down. Uh, desert yellow, skeleton bone, necrotic flesh, and uh, mummy robe, which I'm going to show you in a minute. So those are the colors I always use for my stone work. All right, so this is after I've completed all the stone work. Uh, I've added those colors, and you can see I've added... A little bit of that uh, camo to some of the boards. I decided to go with a little bit different color on the boards. So we got some yellow ochre and some uh, real brown. I'm going to uh, paint some of the boards in that color. I kind of wanted to have a multicolored floor. Like they used different planks that had some paint on it. and uh, Maybe uh, the floor was painted a few times. Whatever. It just wanted to make it look like it's uh, old and aged. And different colors are, are showing up through the floor. Uh, and I wanted to do something different than the usual yellow ochre flooring I did. Even though I did add some just right now. Uh, but I ended up even adding later on some blue to it as well. Just a whole bunch of different colors uh, for that flooring. Mainly just to do something a little different. Alright, so this is after that's all done. I've completed everything on there. I've added all those colors on there to the floor. I can see I've got that multicolored floor going on right now. Now, some of them are a little bright, uh, but as I mentioned in previous videos, uh, the yellow ochre actually gets a little darker once it dries. And I added a little bit of yellow ochre to some of the doorways and just added a little bit of uh, color there. So now we're going to move to the aged wood. So Necromancer Cloak, Ash Gray. Uh, I use a little bit of dark wood, hardened leathers, the speed paints that I use for some of the uh, timbers on here. And I decided to use some of that on the flooring as well. Again, making some more multicolors on my floor. And then I hit everything with the uh, Skeleton Horde and uh, Agrax Earth Shader. Just kind of gets grime everything up, dirty it up. Uh, those are the uh, go-to ones I use for uh, putting on all my stones and in the corners of the building. And made look like weather or raining drops. All that kind of stuff I add with those colors. 
So then I added this Void Shield Blue to it, uh, just to really add some different colors to it. I wanted to uh, paint the inside of that one room over here. I had to put some blue on the wall, like there's remnants of blue on the wall. I ended up using that same uh, blue for the outside of the building as well. I liked it so much on the inside of the wall there, I decided to go up higher and do it on the, uh, the upper level too. So this is after I've completed that, just showing you what it looks like, looking inside the doorways uh, and, uh, and uh, you know, what the overall color scheme is. I really like the multicolored floor, it's just something different. I, I really like the, it looks more rustic uh, for the uh, pirate building here, uh, for the pirate port. I didn't want to go with something that was a little nicer uh, on the flooring. All right, so now we're going to work on the upper level. Essentially, I just made a tracing of the base, uh, except for adding the extensions on the end where the pillars are going to sit. Uh, so a Tudor-style building, as I mentioned in previous uh, videos, is a, has a bit of an overhang for the base. So in the building that I looked at on the set of the Pirates of the Caribbean, that's pretty much what the style of the building looked like. So I kind of wanted to stay within that uh, look of the building. So then similar to the bottom, I cut out all the shapes and sizes that I'm going to need. I drew the lines right on top of the, uh, as well, so I knew where everything should be and how thick it should be. And I measured that all out. And I'm just kind of uh, filing through all the pieces here. Uh, just kind of showing you all the different things that I built. So on each four corners, there's a kind of a roof uh, piece. Uh, eventually the roof will be connected to that. And, uh, and then, of course, I'm going to have to cut out all the windows and doors everywhere on all these pieces here. So the first thing I do is I just cut holes in all the uh, foam. Uh, and then add the balsa wood and matchsticks to frame out the windows. Similar to the uh, the base. Didn't really show you it again because I already did that in the first part of the video. Uh, we're just going to kind of move on here. And I decided, uh, looking at the picture of the one from the Pirates of the Caribbean, that that one side of the building was just kind of like wooden planks and it had no bricks on it at all so I kind of wanted to keep that too as well I like that detail to it it gives some interest and contrast to the building so then I just show you the hot glue gun I glued everything together uh, and now I've moved to putting posts in the upper level uh, and this definitely will support the roof uh, the roof I'm, I'm planning on making is one piece as well so I'm going to try to trace the whole thing out again and then build the roof right on top of that. So then I decided to build the staircase. Uh, this is just insulation foam and decided to put a little bit of bricks on it and I'm just gonna put some wooden planks. Kind of uh, figured that I should configure it this way. That's the main entrance way and go up the staircase uh, up to the second level. Kind of made it two staircases side by side. Uh, that way you can conserve space. Uh, and I also made the, the squares you can see on here large enough for a uh, miniature to climb up them. Uh, again, I want to make this piece uh, uh, completely playable. So when I made the height of it, uh, you got to consider there is insulation foam that's going to be sitting on top, so you want it a little bit taller, but I, I am going to add popsicle sticks, uh, kind of planks to the top there, so it will be a little bit taller than it is right now once I put those planks on. And I'm just showing you how I plan on covering the uh, trim of it with uh, bricks, and then I'm showing you the popsicle sticks, uh, just to add wooden planks on the steps, uh, just to add some uh, details to those steps. So this is what it looks like after I've added the wooden planks on there and all the bricks. Uh, and this is just about ready for uh, the black coat. Uh, once I've uh, got all those pieces together and I'm just going to cover it in uh, the black craft paint. Alright, so now I'm going to move on to the coffins. So those are two pieces of balsa wood. Now unfortunately I don't have wide enough balsa wood to make the base of the coffin. So I just used two pieces of balsa wood. Uh, trace the design over top of the two pieces. And really just cut them out and glue them together. And that gave me a nice uh, base for my coffins here. And then uh, with the skinnier balsa wood, I kind of made an edging that went around the uh, the sides of it. So it gave it a little uh, depth to the sides of the coffin. So that's pretty much all I did for the coffin. All right, so now I'm looking at the top on top of here, uh, making sure my stair staircase fits nicely. 
Uh, I'm going to have to put some trim around that opening just to clean it up a little bit. Uh, and uh, I'm going to have to peel that paper off the bottom. It's a lot sturdier now, now that I've glued all those things to the top of it. Um, but I want to pull that off and texturize it because technically it's the roof of the bottom floor, right? So you want it to have a stucco feel to it. So then I moved on to, as you can see, I went around the staircase there with the uh, coffee stir sticks and I'm going to frame out the edges and then move to the popsicle sticks the same as I did for the base. And here's the uh, construction of the shutters. So that is skinny balsa wood that I actually uh, cut you know, with my X-Acto blade into even smaller slivers. Uh, I put three per uh, panel, and then those are matchsticks that I cut out. So you can see I got them in different stages. And then I decided to just glue them on the outside, like they're open, which makes it infinitely easier to paint. <laughs> Uh, so then I uh, went on to making that other section of the building that's all wooden planks, and I started gluing the popsicle sticks on there uh, just to try to finish uh, that outer wall off. Uh, and then I used square balsa wood to frame out the entire building. I went all the way around the entire building and put that nice little frame. It just breaks up the bottom from the top, uh, and I wanted to add that uh, uh, detail. So then I wanted to do the corners of the building with uh, coffee stir sticks uh, and start adding some of the details that I would see on a Tudor style uh, building. So you can see I'm starting to put the cross hatches on there and just kind of frame it all out. Uh, and that's what I'm showing you here. This is one stage of it. I'm not going to watch me glue everything on here. Um, I'm just, it's just, that's just coffee stir sticks that I'm gluing on to. Some of it's actually balsa wood as well. Uh, I really, if I had the right shape balsa wood, I would keep using that um, because it's so much easier to work with. It's such a softer wood. It's easy to cut uh, and easy to craft with. Um, but uh, the coffee stir sticks do add a lot more durability because it's a little bit of a stronger stick. So this is after I've pretty well completed all the details that I wanted to. I see I've added some square pieces on there. Uh, this is all the, the Tudor style details that I've added to it. Uh, and I'm pretty happy with the designs. Now, all these pieces you add on there add strengths to these foam walls. Um, so now you have nice, uh, they're nice and stiff and rigid, uh, and everything sits nice and snug. Now, to address the top from slipping from the bottom, I came up with the idea of using these three pieces of balsa wood. And you can see one is facing the opposite way, and the other two are facing the other way. Essentially, uh, so the building doesn't slide backwards and forwards or side to side. It sits in there nice and snug, uh, and uh, it, it's a good way to hold it together. A really simple way to hold the whole building together. So then I want to address the pillars out front. This is just balsa wood. I measured them all out. Uh, I cut three for the front, two for each side. So that gives you uh, seven um, pillars that I'm doing. I'm going to paint them all separate before I glue them on, same as the coffins. So now I'm going to go to the black craft paint, and we're going to cover all the other pieces that we have here now. So we got the stairs, we got the coffins, we got the pillars, and we got the top level all covered in uh, folk art black craft paint. And that sealed everything in, and now we're ready for the undertones. So the same base as the bottom. We got real brown, bark brown, and pablo. I'm going to show you them uh, once again, <laughs> just so we're all clear on which ones. I'm sure if anybody who's watched my videos have seen this a hundred times. Uh, these are the colors that I use. I just have big bats of these colors. <laughs> uh, I just really like the undertone of this, and it gives my all my terrain the same feel to it, and that's why I use that as all, on all my bases. So this is after I've added it all. I'm just kind of giving you a quick uh, overview of what it looks like after I've added all those colors. I'm moving on to stonework, similar to the base, camel, uh, desert yellow, uh, skeleton uh, bone, necrotic flesh, and mummy robe. Those are all the colors that I use again for my stonework. Uh, now the camel I also use for the stucco too on the walls on the inside. Uh, and I did decide to go desert yellow on one of the walls. And I'm just showing you all the different areas that I'm going to hit uh, stonework on. Any stonework on here, I'm going to add a few paneling to the, the, the floor as well. Uh, and of course, I want to add, like I said, the camo to the uh, the outer stucco wall as well. And then I was just pointing to you the desert yellow, that one room 
Uh, I'm going to make uh, yellow. The bottom floor is blue. The top floor is yellow. <laughs> all right, so this is after I've added all those colors. You can see that's uh, really happy with the stone look. I also used mummy robe to uh, whiten the windows a little bit. So I wanted to frame out the windows in a lighter white color. So I didn't use actual white. I used mummy robe, and I kind of like that a little bit better. I also used it a little bit on the shutters as well. So then we got our yellow ochre, uh, real brown mixture. Uh, we're going to add to some of the wood planks on here, similar to the base. Uh, we're not going to go cover the entire piece like I've done in the past, uh, just some of them. So we got uh, dark wood, hardened leather, ash gray, and necrotic, uh, sorry, necromancer cloak, uh, again, for aged wood. And this, again, this is just duplication of what we did on the bottom. Again, we just want it to feel like it's part of the same building. So then we use that void shield blue that I used in that one room down in the base. I decided to do the outer walls of this uh, entire building. So when you apply that paint, just make it bright in the center and then just kind of fade it out to the sides. It gives it a kind of a, a shadow effect. And you can see I've added some blue to the planks as well, just to give it a more uh, rustic look to the floors. I, I forgot to mention that I added commando green to the base of the building too. You can see that there's green on there. Uh, that's what I used uh, that uh, commando green. So then we get Urgrax Earthshader, Skeleton Horde, uh, and the commando green again. We're going to do the upper level and do the weathering on there, plus some of the pillars and the coffins. Just give it all a weathered look. So I kind of sped through this, but I just wanted to show you a little bit of me applying the Skeleton Horde. Um, it has a nice uh, feel to it when you add it to, next to that bright blue. It really gives it a stained, weathered look that I really, really like. And then, of course, I hid inside the coffins. I hit the Agrax Earth Shader in there as well um, in, in these coffins just to kind of dirty it and grime it up a bit. All right, so this is after I've got all those things done. Everything's painted on here. Uh, pretty happy with the way things are. I glued everything in place at this point, uh, except for I wanted to fill in this little path that I left. So I, I always wanted to put sand in there, but that's the last step I really like to do. I'm going to add sand, a couple of tufts, and then I'm going to use some of this uh, moss that I got from the dollar store that I've been kind of using lately, just to kind of put it into the into the rocks there to feel like there's some plant life there. And that's pretty much it. Let's take a look at the battlefield. So we got some, uh, this is uh, the start of the pirate port. So there's our building from our previous episode. The uh, pier was the destroyed building. And it was kind of like a watchtower in it. Uh, and then some of these buildings are from the uh, that the painting tutorial I did of uh, an old building. And then here's the new one that uh, I, we completed in this, uh, this episode. Now, of course, we got the roof still to do. Uh, I do want to do a doorway probably on one of these. Uh, and actually have a door probably on the back. Um, so we're going to build doors and some signs that I want to add to it. All right, that's pretty much it for this episode. Hope everybody enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.